Hey everybody, it's Brian and Jim. And Jim, aren't you so excited? It's like we're going back to the 90s. Yeah, you mean like the show that was hosted by Hulk Hogan and Leila Ali? God damn it! Anyway, we're doing American Gladiators. Oh, good! <laughs> anyway, we're doing American Gladiators on the NES. Released in 1991, this game was released on the NES, the Amiga, the Sega Genesis, and the Super NES. Obviously, we're doing the NES version, which differs a lot from the later versions on the more powerful consoles. Surprise, surprise! This is based off the American Gladiators TV show. Hugely popular in the early 90s, and even has the license names of the gladiators you go against. So, it was developed by Incredible Technologies, who's, well, best known for the Golden Tee Golf series. Yay, every bar, I've seen their game. And it was published by Game Tech, who we've seen before. Anyway, let's get to it. American Gladiator is a game made up of a bunch of mini games. So if I want to talk about the graphics, I gotta go through each event. It's tedious, but we are goddamn thorough. Don't you deny us that. So anyway, let's start with Assault. It looks like a top-down shooter, except the only issue is the goddamn lines. They get really annoying, especially if you have to keep replaying this level like we did the first couple times we played it. Next, you have Human Cannonball. It's not that bad. Uh, kind of think of games like Pitfall, except in American Gladiators. Then you have Joust, which, once again, this is probably your best-looking event. You have two guys fighting, for the most part are palette swaps, except one has longer hair. And there's some okay platforming, but all the platforms basically look exactly the same. Then you have Powerball, which is like a soccer field, except there's five random columns that you gotta throw a ball into. But the problem, just like in Assault, those goddamn vertical lines, they'll make you go crazy as if the gameplay isn't bad enough. And finally, there's the wall, which is... Eh... It's just a chick climbing up a wall. There's not a lot of negative we can say about that. So, even though this game did have five different events, and they all, for the most part, I guess, were different, me and Jim found it really annoying, especially those two events with those vertical lines. As you can see, I gave it a three, Jim gave it a four. I'm gonna add two beers, just for those two goddamn events and their goddamn vertical lines. All right, the sound. Sound effects wise, it's really weak. Although, in the Human Cannonball and Jousting events, you get this delightful, very uncharacteristic of the NES blood gurgling scream when people fall. The music, it's, you know what, it's okay. The opening music's pretty good. Each event has a different soundtrack, but none of them are particularly great, especially for 1991 but at least you get variety, and none of them are ear-piercing or take away from the game, so there's that. Brian gave it a 4, I gave it a 5, I found the whole package to be average for the most part, Brian maybe a little less, and I'll add two beers, one for the variety and one for that screen. Alright, so the control is an area where it's so tied into the gameplay that it's hard for me to, to not spill over, but I'm going to do my best. When you're playing the Joust game, all you're really doing is button mashing. Now, it's slightly delayed, but at the end of the day, it's very simplistic, and I guess you could say it works. The Assault mode, no complaints there. It works fine. The Human Cannonball level, once again, this is just a matter of timing. The control is really just hitting the A button when you're ready to release. So, yeah, there's not really much in the way of control for that game. In the Powerball stage, all you're doing is running around, you're picking up the ball with the B button, and you're dropping it off in the columns. No issue, really, but it just felt slightly stiff. The worst level, and the most pain in the deck, is the wall. When you are climbing, you have to alternate A and B as fast as you can with the direction you want to go. That would be all well and good if you didn't have to be pixel perfect and there weren't fucking people coming after you. Not to mention, your fingers are going to get tired really fast. We really hated it, and honestly, that's the game that brought our overall score down. We both gave it fives because most of them are at least playable. They just all feel very laggy. I'm going to add at least one beer for that god damn wall level. All right, the gameplay. Well, Brian pretty much covered everything I really needed to say. Some of the events were pretty good, such as, you know, the assault and, and I guess Joust kind of worked. And some of them were just goddamn terrible. 
there's a really, really stiff learning curve in this game. The AI is just, the AI is crazy hard and they are relentless, no matter what event it is. I know there's people out there who can get through without being touched. You guys are way better than I am, because this game is friggin' hard. Can't really speak on the Eliminator because we didn't get to it, but overall, it's still just, everything still seems stiff and laggy. It almost seems like an unfinished product. It definitely has that licensed game syndrome, so we gave it fours. There's just not a lot here. Jim, would you say it's like going against the real Nitro and please? If I never heard you interrupt me again, just shut the hell up. But am I right? <sighs> He's right. As far as the beer meter goes, I'll add another three beers for the three games that just really suck. The originality is an area where, although me and Jim scored it the same, we kind of disagreed. In my eyes, this game is just a version of other games. I mentioned before, Human Cannonball kind of felt like Pitfall to me, as much of a stretch as that may be. The Jousting, I felt like you've had kind of fighting platformers before. The Assault level felt like a shitty down version of Akari Warriors, which how you make Akari Warrior shittier, I don't know. And then you have the Wall Climb, which I've seen games where you climb up, climb up walls before. And finally, the Powerball level, which, well, son of a bitch, I guess I've never seen that specifically before. It's kind of like a soccer game, just with your hands and kind of putting them on post. But either way, I'll give it points for the fact that this is the first and only game on the NES for the American Gladiators team. So as you see, we both gave it sixes. I'm going to add three beers to this, just to fuck Jim over. All right, the replayability. Ugh, me, we must have been drunk at this point, but here we go. You get the five events, and the five events are hard. And in order to get good at them, you have to play them again and Jim, again. You got the sixth event. I was getting to that. Well, stop playing with your food and get to it. Like I said, the five normal events are very hard. And in order to get good at them, you're gonna have to play them a lot if you ever want to see the sixth event. Are you happy? Stop playing with your food. Ugh. Even then, the sixth event is even harder, so good luck ever finishing this. People out there have done it. We've seen it. But holy shit. Now, there's not really a, I guess, true two-player mode in this game. There's two players, but you basically just take turns. At the end of the day, it's, uh, I mean, there's options here, and the difficulty alone is really what adds to it. That's if you want to try and get good at the game. If you play it for a little bit and you say, this sucks, and you throw it away, well, you're not going to get a lot out of it, so... The replayability kind of depends on what you put into it. Either way, just for potential alone, we gave it sevens. And I'm going to add another two beers for its Frugazy two-player mode. Overall, this is something that really disappointed me. As a kid, I wouldn't say I regularly watch this program, but I did probably every at least once a month catch this on TV. And it was fun as shit to watch. It was over the top and crazy. Always seemed like a great idea for a video game. I really didn't know about this one when I was a kid, so finding out about this now, I got excited. And then we played, and I was pissed. It's a good thing I drank as much beer as I did. This game just has really stiff control, gameplay that will never make you want to come back, and a two-player mode, like Jim said, probably could have been the thing to save it if you could actually go against the person instead of just handing off the controller. So, with all that being said, I gave it a 3, Jim gave it a 4. As you can see, this rounds it out to a 4.8 overall. And honestly, if it wasn't for the replayability and I guess the control on some of the events being okay, it would be much lower. Either way, you should definitely avoid this. Even if you're super nostalgic like I was about the show American Gladiators, Avoid this game. Maybe it's better on a Super NES. I don't know. Well, I played the Genesis one and not really. But the Super NES is better. Ha! No! And when it comes to the beer pairing, we're going to go with Saranac's 4059 Porter. This is not their best beer, and we would never suggest wasting your best or favorite beer on a game like this. However, you are going to need something to take away from the frustrating gameplay. So, beer like this coming in at 5.2%, it 
It won't leave you completely drunk. You may still be able to manage the controls, but it'll definitely numb the senses of anger that will just rise and rise as you die time after time again. Remember, drink your beers and play your game responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.